Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now in this video, I'm gonna be taking the React.js LinkedIn quiz, and I've already taken the JavaScript, CSS, and HTML quiz, and I scored top 5% on all three of them. So let's see if I can do the same on this one. I'm feeling pretty confident because I at least have a React course and I'm pretty confident with React, but we'll see how many curveballs they can throw me. Okay, already jumping in, first question. What is the difference between the click behaviors of these two buttons, assuming that this dot handle click is bound correctly? Okay, button on a click, this dot handle click, and then here it's using an arrow function to call it instead. So the main thing is going to be the context in which these is called. So let's see, there, okay, there is a difference. Button B will not fire the handle or this dot handle click successfully. Button A will not have access to the event object on click of the button. And button A will not fire the handler this dot handle click successfully. Okay, because it specifically says assuming that this dot handle click is bound correctly. So in React, if you're using class components, you need to essentially bind your events properly. You need to bind the this properly. So I think actually there will be no difference because they specifically said that it is bound correctly in the question. I didn't really read that part as I should have. So this should work because button B will not fire the handle or this dot handle click successfully. I like how it has, okay, and then it says button A is not gonna work. They, they should all three work. So I'm gonna go with there is no difference. Even though I haven't used class components in a while, so I could be wrong. Which attribute do you use to replace inner HTML in the browser? That is dangerously set inner HTML. I think it has like underscores at the beginning of it now, so this might be slightly outdated, but yeah, dangerously set inner HTML. They made it really long, really painful to write out, and they put the word dangerous in there so you wouldn't use it unless you really, really knew what you were doing. How do you fix the syntax error that results from running this code? Const person equals first name, last name. Okay, it's an object, first name, last name. And then we have a console.log. Okay, so this is really not a React question. This is an arrow function question. We need to put parentheses here at the beginning and the end of our arrow function because it doesn't know what these brackets are. It's assuming these brackets are opening and closing the arrow function. So let's just see, replace the object with an array, add a return statement before the first curly brace, wrap the object in parentheses. There we go. That way it knows that it's returning this as an object and not calling the function with these brackets. It's pretty confusing, but yeah, that's what's going on. I run into this a lot when I'm doing like maps inside of React. What is eTargetID called in this code snippet? Uh, okay, so a JSX code string. No, it's a computed property name. That sounds correct. A set value or a dynamic key. Okay, I mean, it could be either of these, I guess. A dynamic key, it's like a dynamic key for this computed property name. Also, it's a computed property name because, okay, either of these I would say is correct. They both sound exactly the same to me because we're computing the property name from e.targetID and dynamic key is just like the same exact thing, but I'm guessing one of these is like the correct way of saying it and the other one is not. Uh, we'll go with computed property name. It sounds more legit, but I don't, I think it could be either. Why is it a good idea to pass a function to set state instead of an object? Okay, so this is essentially so that you update the object correctly based on if you call the set state multiple times. Set state is asynchronous and might result in out of sync values. That this is it. Essentially, if you call set state with a function, it'll give you the previous value. Even if you called set state multiple times, it'll always make sure to give you the correct previous value so you can properly do it since it's asynchronous and occurs in different orders. So you could overwrite your state. What value of button will allow you to pass the name of the person to be hugged? Okay, what value of button will allow you to pass the name of the person to be hugged? Okay, it's a weird question. So we got a React class here, hug, console log, hugging, plus ID, render. Okay, Okay. so we're just seeing what the button should look like. So we haven't bound hug. So this is one of those bounding questions. So we could do an arrow function that calls this.hug. Uh, this right here is so far looking correct. Yeah, so the reason we have to call it inside of an arrow function is in no point did we bind the hug to this. Essentially in the constructor with class components, you need to say like this dot hug equals this dot hug bind this just so it's properly bound. If you don't do that, you need to use an arrow function to call it. Otherwise it won't have access to this. Like you won't have access to your actual class. So this right here should do it. And the reason we have E here is just because that's the parameter. We don't have name. That's not being passed in the on click. Even though hug is passed with an ID. So I technically, okay, yeah, no, this will work because name is the first thing passed. Like technically this E shouldn't even be passed to hug, but whatever. 
What will happen when this use effect hook is executed assuming name is not already equal to John? So the use effect is running it setting name to John, and then it's running whenever name changes. Okay, well, when this use effect hook is assuming name is not already equal to John, it will execute the code inside the function, but only after waiting to ensure that no other component is accessing the name variable. It will cause an infinite loop. It will cause an error immediately. It will update the value of name once and not run again until name is changed from the outside. So, this is actually a good question. Because it should execute the code in the function whenever the name changes, but if we're constantly sending the name to John over and over and over again, I, that won't actually cause it to rerun the effect. So it won't cause an infinite loop. It won't cause an error. It'll update the value of name once and not run again until name is changed from the outside. I believe that's probably it. And it'll execute the code inside a function, but we have to wait to show that no other component. Okay, yeah, it's this one. Because if we update the variable to the same value, use effect is smart enough to know we didn't actually change anything. What is the child prop? Children prop. That's essentially the elements inside of an element. Let you pass components as data to other components. Property lets you pass data to child elements. Property that adds child components to state. Property that lets you set an array as a property. I think it's this one. I'll let you pass components as data to other components. Essentially, if you put components inside of another component, they're passed as the children prop to a component. What do you call the message wrapped in curly braces below? Oh, great. Okay. So this is going to be some, some, some bleh, syntax name that I don't know. So we have a variable, and then we're just wrapping that variable in these curly braces to display it as a variable. I would say like a JSX wrapper because it's it's a JSX. It's inside of JSX, so it's not a function. It's not an expression. It's not an element. So I'm going to go with a JSX wrapper. That doesn't sound right, though. I want to say JS expression, actually, because it's like code. It's like code. Oh, okay, because it's what do you call the message wrapped in curly braces? But I'm going to go with JS expression because it's like a JavaScript expression. It is some JavaScript code. Could be wrong, though. Currently, handle click is being called instead of passed as a reference. How do you fix this? Okay, so it's one of these bind questions. So this dot handle click, and it's calling it, it obviously shouldn't be calling it, this dot handle click dot bind handle click. We have handle click, that's not correct. This dot handle click, this technically passes it. And this is just not uppercased. So this will pass handle click, but I don't know if it's being bound correctly or not because it's using class components. And this one is binding to handle click. It should bind to this though, instead of handle click. So this is incorrect. This one's incorrect, this one's incorrect. So it has to be this one. That's the only option available. When do you use layout effect? So layout effect is only used when you are actually affecting like paint. It's based on like the cycle it happens because it happens in a different cycle. It's like always happening at the same time as opposed to use effect, which is a little different. Optimizing, no, to change the layout, no. We need the browser to paint before the effect occurs. Okay, that's it right there. Because if you use layout effect, you can actually compute like the size of a component, for example, the size of an element, or to complete the update. So that's the only reason you would use it. When using Webpack, why would you need to use a loader? Oh man, Webpack, I never use Webpack. To load a website into everyone's phone, that doesn't sound right. To pre-process files, I think that might be it. To put together physical file folders and to load external data. I think it's for pre-processing. But I don't use Webpack. Like I don't write my own Webpack. I just use Create React Apps Webpack or whatever other Webpack is given to me. So it's a complete guess. I'm probably wrong. When might you use React.peer component? This is a component that doesn't have state. When you do not want your component to have state. Okay, well, that sounds pretty correct. When you want to have a default implementation, no. Uh, when your sibling components, no. Okay, nope. It's definitely when you don't have state. There we go. What is the name to used? What is the name of the tool used to take JSX and turn it into create elements called? That's the React DOM. Yeah. Because you have like React DOM render that turns code correctly into the right place. Take JSX and turn it into create elements. Okay, actually, maybe no, it's maybe not React DOM because React DOM is what you call like you'll call React DOM dot create element. But what turns JSX into React DOM? That's probably going to be Babel. Babel does all the transpiling for you. So I'm actually going to go with Babel on this one. How do you set a default value for an uncontrolled form field? Um, uncontrolled. So if you're using uncontrolled, you would want to set the default value. If you set value, that's assuming it's a controlled input. Default doesn't exist, and there's no automatic assignment. So we're going to go with default value. Let's see how I did. Top 5%. Okay, that feels good. There's quite a few tricky questions in there. I honestly expected a lot more function hook-based questions, and there's a lot of class-based questions, and I haven't used React classes and 
well over a year, probably even longer. So it's a little bit tricky in that regard. But other than that, wasn't too bad. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other LinkedIn quiz videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this.